What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to double or even triple your frame rate on your handheld gaming PC. So right now we've got Forza Horizon 5 running at ultra settings, 1080, no scaling, and we're seeing an average of around 43 FPS. Definitely not the best, but as soon as we enable this, you can see that our frame rate is going to jump up significantly. And we're still at ultra 1080, I'm still not using any scaling. What we've got here is LSFG3, the newest update to lossless scaling over on Steam, and one of the biggest issues has been significantly reduced, and that's going to be latency. I kind of held off through a couple updates to make a video on this because of latency, but with this new version, I think it's well worth trying out now. And if you really wanted to go crazy with it, using lossless scaling, we could scale and add frame generation. So now, instead of running this at around 55 FPS, we're up over 150 FPS. This is going to work on your handheld, it's going to work on your mini PC, it'll even work on your gaming desktop, but this is not a free app, unfortunately. It's over on Steam, and it only costs 6 bucks. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how I use this and the new changes for Lossless Scaling FG3. So if you're not familiar with Lossless Scaling, like I mentioned, this is a paid app over on Steam, but in my opinion, it's well worth it. It's $6.99 and uh, it's updated pretty regularly. If we check out all of their updates, I did skip this here because I was waiting for lossless scaling frame gen three. The change log is listed on Steam and with this one, we have a lot of new features. And the first one here is better quality, reduced flickering and border artifacts, lower GPU load, 40% reduction in X2 mode. And by X2, I'll explain that in a second, but basically this is gonna double our frame rate. There's also an unlocked frame multiplier now, but you know, with a lower end system with an iGPU, I've been sticking it too. I've even tested out three with some games, but for the most part, I'd say X2 is really where it's at. Improved latency. Now this is a big one because a lot of people do complain about the latency. And with the first couple releases, yeah, depending on how you had it set up, there was some noticeable input latency. And still with frame generation, be it Nvidia's frame gen, AMD's frame gen, or even uh, Intel's new XCSS frame generation, there's always gonna be a little more latency because we're actually generating frames that weren't really there in the first place. But with this new release, 24% better end-to-end -end latency, and it really does show. One of the main things that I usually don't play with a uh, frame gen on is racing games because you really need to be precise. But in this video, I will be testing one out just to show you what we've got going on here. And it does work so much better than the older versions. I did mention we've got that unlocked multiplier and there's many more features here. So if you're interested in checking out the change log yourself, I will leave a link in the description to the official Steam page, but let's go ahead and get this started up. At the time I'm making this video, Lossless Scaling does offer a beta UI, and this will be implemented into the uh, official version soon, but in order to enable it, just go to Manage, Properties, Betas, make sure you're on the beta. We'll go ahead and launch it. And here it is. Definitely a lot cleaner than the older versions, and it's really simple to use. So basically what we've got here are different profiles. We can create a new profile if you want to, set up a name, you can set up a filter, but we're gonna be sticking with default here. In the very top right-hand corner, this is our scale button. So once we've got everything ready in here, all of our parameters set correctly, we're gonna choose scale. It'll give us a few seconds to choose the application or the game we wanna scale, and it'll do it automatically for us. First up, frame generation. Type, LSFG 3.0. This is the newest one, and this is the one I'm gonna be sticking with. You can experiment with the older versions if you want to, but I've noticed better quality and lower latency with 3.0. Our mode, 2X, 3X, 4X, and custom. So from custom, I mean, we can go on up, but just note, hardware will take a hit on performance. So with this, I usually just go to X2, especially for handhelds. If I was using something like an RTX 3050 or higher, I could do X3 without an issue. But on the iGPU, I usually go to X2. Resolution scale. This is gonna be the resolution scale of the frame that's generated. So we can go up to 100% or we can go down to 25%. I usually stick it around 50 to 60. We're gonna to go to 60 right here. And remember over here, we've got our upscaling or our scaling. This is gonna sharpen it on up. I don't mess around with capture AI, cursor, kind of just leave it like it is. Scaling type. You can use frame gen without scaling if you want to, but since we're working with an iGPU here, 
I usually add a little bit of scaling. So for instance, if I'm running a game on my machine right now, I can go to 900p, and from here, it'll take it up to 1080 as long as my monitor supports it. There's a wide plethora of different resolutions you can scale up from, but I usually go from 720 or 900 up to 1080 because most of these handhelds usually have 1080 or 1200p display. Our type, lossless scaling one, but recently SGSR was added and this is Snapdragon Game Super Resolution. Uh, there's a full GitHub on it. I've been doing a lot of experimenting between all of these scalers and this seems to be the one that I've been kind of sticking to recently. But a lot of this is gonna be personal preference. Between all of these, I would probably do LS1 or the SGSR. You can go with FSR, NIS, BCAS, Anime 4K. My personal favorite right now with this new version is SGSR. Just hovering over any of these will give us a nice little description. When it comes to our mode, I'm usually at auto with the aspect ratio, but you can set up a custom scale. So let's say we want to go up 1.5 times. We can set it just like this. We can go up two times with it. Personally, I leave it at auto and keep the same aspect ratio of whatever display I'm playing on. This has allowed me to get really good performance and decent quality while upscaling. Personally, I've been using it a lot in V-Sync mode, mainly because I'm using a higher refresh rate monitor like 120 or above. You can disable it completely. You can go to default, V-Sync half, one third, one fourth. And the reason I've been using V-Sync mode is it's not gonna generate any more frames than your refresh rate of your display, which will help with performance. So you're not really overrunning everything. Max frame latency, now this is gonna be really important and this can really help or hurt performance. This is the number of frames that are allowed to be stored in a queue before they're rendered. So I'm usually sitting at two, three, four, it really depends on what game and you may have to experiment with this, but two to three seems really nice with these iGPUs. And again, I mean, if you're on higher end hardware, you can go up, I'd say around five on something like an RTX 3050 or 4060. HDR support, G-Sync support, draw FPS, and this is gonna give us a little counter in the top left-hand corner. It'll show us the old FPS and the new FPS with the generated frames included. GPU and display, preferred, since I'm just using that iGPU, it's set to auto here. And behavior, multiple display mode. This can help out with some issues if you're using multiple displays, but right now I've got my internal display turned off on the handheld and I'm just connected to a monitor. So I've got this set up exactly how I want to run it with most of the games that we're going to be testing here. LSFG 3.0, 2x frame multiplier, resolution scale set to 60. Yeah, we'll do 60. SGSR, sharpness can also be adjusted. Mode auto, aspect ratio, sync mode. I'm in V-Sync and our max frame latency, I've just set it to three. Now I'm going to show you how to use it and how it performs. I'm going to get a game started up. Here we have Doom Eternal. I'm at 900p high settings with no other scaling going on inside of the game. And you can see that I'm in window mode. You can use borderless or windowed if you're going to be using scaling from lossless scaling. If you're not going to be doing any scaling from within the app and just using frame gen, full screen is fine. But again, 900p high settings. We're right there on the edge. Can't quite hit a steady 60 with this game, but you know, it gets real close. But with lossless scaling enabled, we can double the frame rate. So I've got the game running here and uh, I've just pulled up lossless scaling. We're going to choose the scale button in the top right hand corner. Then we're going to choose Doom Eternal. That's the app we want to scale and add frame gen to. Now up in the top left hand corner, you can see we've got our original FPS without the generated frames and the generated FPS. So I've got this set to V-Sync, so we're right there at 120. It will dip under that with this game at high, but if I drop this down to medium settings, we could run this at a steady 120 FPS. And like you saw at the beginning, we will test this at X3 with some games just to get way over that frame rate. But yeah, I mean, this definitely doubled the frame rate on Doom Eternal with this device. And with lossless scaling frame generation 3.0, latency is greatly reduced. This is a game that's totally playable like this, but we're not really trying to overdo it here. I'm not at X3 generating way more frames than we need here. And another good option would be if you're running a 120 hertz display, inside of lossless scaling, go to half V-Sync or just set your display to 60 hertz. That way it doesn't need to generate as many frames to just get that steady 60. 
Right now, we are generating a ton of frames that we really don't need. I mean, in all actuality, if you wanted to run this on up, yeah. But I mean, these games are definitely really enjoyable at 60 FPS on the built-in screen of these handhelds. So doing it like that is another great option. The next game I wanted to show off here was Hogwarts Legacy. And if you've ever tried to run this on a handheld or a lower end chipset, you know, you really do have to take the settings down. Right now, we're actually at 720p high settings. And there's no way on the Z1 Extreme that we're going to hit 60 with the way it is. Even if we turn FSR to performance from within the game, it's just not going to do it. So we can utilize lossless scaling to get a nice bump in performance. And on older versions, this was one of those games that actually gave me a lot of issues. Uh, the head or the hat of my character would disappear when I turned. With version 3.0, that is an issue that the developers have addressed with most games. So yeah, we're not getting that uh, hat or head flickering with this. And we went from an average of 44 FPS up to an average of 74 FPS. I also wanted to test out Starfield and keep in mind, this does have FSR frame gen built in. And usually I don't mess around with lossless scaling if the game has it built in because it does work pretty well. But with this one here, I just have never got really great performance out of this game on the Z1 Extreme. So I figured we'd go ahead and test it here. And right now we're at low 900p, 50% resolution scale. And even with it set up like this, you can see we're hard pressed to even get over 30 FPS. But with lossless scaling enabled, we do get close to that 60 mark. Now there are ways that we could actually get a little more out of it. I could take it down to 720 instead of 900 maybe add X3 frame gen, or even take the resolution scale of those frames generated down. But this is much better than it was. And if you've played this game, you know, in basically any city, frame rate really falls on its face, even on high-end hardware. With something like this running in an iGPU, I think this is a really good option. Here's another game that doesn't have frame gen built in, but does run pretty decently on this device at a lower setting. Right now we're at 1080 Ultra and I'm not going to be using any scaling with lossless scaling, but with this racing game here, Forza Horizon 5, we can actually do X3 frame rate increase. So with 1080 Ultra settings, no extra scaling, we're seeing an average of around 43 FPS with this. But with lossless scaling enabled and frame gen set to X3, we're now over 100 FPS on average. And yeah, I mean, it feels good. Like I mentioned at the beginning, racing games and even fighting games are something I kind of never use with frame gen because of latency. But with this new version, whatever they've done over there has really decreased it, making this game super playable even at that 3x frame gen setting on the ROG Ally X. And if you wanted to get just crazy frame rates out of this, you could lower the resolution in game, then upscale it with lossless scaling. So right now we're at 720 ultra upscaling to 1080 and we're getting over 150 FPS on average. Now I completely understand that there's people out there that don't like frame gen whatsoever, but the way I see it is, you know, we're kind of working with what we have here, given that the Z1 Extreme or basically any other handheld on the market right now just isn't up to par to a DGPU. Every little bit helps, and I think a tweak like this for games that don't have native frame gen built in is an awesome solution to a low power device like a handheld or even a mini PC. And with the $6 price tag over on Steam, as long as you know what you're getting into, I do think it's well worth it. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I did think that this was a big enough update to go ahead and make a video on. I'll leave a link to their official Steam page down below, and if you've got any questions at all, let me know in the comments. That's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.